I rejoice and I am glad in it that he has allowed me to see a beautiful sunrise. Yeah, I got me a little thing where I started getting up a little bit earlier and going for a morning walk on a Sunday morning. And it's something to see that sunrise and see how beautiful it is early in the morning. Amen. Over the haze of the, you know, the small, the little bit. Uh, and it's just a beautiful sight to see. Um, and, and it just reminds me of the goodness of the Lord. And how great God is that he has allowed us to see yet another day. And he has allowed us to rise with the rising of the sun.
condemned the sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are of the spirit, yeah. the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah, Lord. Verse 8, 1 through 6. May God bless his red word.
Yep, they come in. The one that come out of that big company is somebody else. Amen. And then, so I would be doing that person and then just to have them come out here Sunday while I'm gone at 11 o'clock and nobody show up. Amen, somebody. And, um, and so there, there may not, we may not have any because I don't know which, I know once, the third Sunday when I'm going to be gone, the second Sunday is if you have time. Because I convinced the science begrudgingly to take a road trip to San Antonio. Amen. On, um, on June 25th is when I will finally get to walk across the stage for my PhD that I finished two years ago uh -huh. in 2020. And the, and the graduation ceremony is in San Antonio, Texas. So rather than fly down to San Antonio, maybe let's take a road trip. We, we, we're, we're going to travel. Hallelujah. And we're going to drive to a state and spend the night and see something in that state. We're going to drive to another state, spend the night and see something in that state. We're going to end up in San Antonio. Amen. Attend the graduation hang out for a little bit, then come back in the opposite direction and see some more states. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. And see, you got to understand, my wife and him for all of that right there. She like to just get me there, let me stay in the hotel and be cool, that's all. <laughs> but every now and then, she humor me, she humor me and let me do crazy stuff like that. Amen. It's so crazy. I think there's a question of uh, well, I won't be here, so if you want to do it, that's what I do. If you want me to be a part of it, have to be second Sunday, because third Sunday, I definitely won't be here third Sunday. I know that for sure. Yeah. Amen? Uh, so, so then we have to judge. So praise be to God. Build yourselves a call. Those are the announcements. Oh, on the fourth Saturday, or is that the fifth Saturday? Um, the last Saturday in the month, Saturday before the fifth Sunday, we are having our first union since COVID. Amen. And we are We'll be having this first union meeting uh, um, May 28th. I said June, but it's May. I'm, I'm getting confused. We talked something about June. May 28th. That's not this coming Saturday, but the next Saturday. Uh, we'll be having it because that is a Saturday before the fifth Sunday. Amen? And so we, we want you to come out. It is in person. We will do some virtual, as they call it. They call it a hybrid now, where you have virtual and in person. In person. May 28th, we, we invite, it's going to be at um, St. John Missionary Baptist Church. Uh, St. John Missionary Baptist Church, we will be there, and uh, we invite you to come and be a part of our uh, ceremony. There are articles preached that day, and uh, we can, um, oh gosh, I forgot his name. Connor Frank will be in the workshop presenter. Connor Frank will be in the workshop presenter. So come and have a good time. Praise be to God. Let us go to the Lord. And one final thing, we have the leadership on, um, on uh, Thursday night. Uh, we agree to set Saturday, um, or June, June, each Saturday in June, each Saturday in June, we will begin the cleanup process of the main, on the main building over there across the street. Amen. We will begin cleaning and sanitizing that building for use ASAP, A-S-A-P, immediately. So we will begin the first Saturday in June at 8 o'clock. And each Saturday will meet and, and we'll work until, until we say it's enough. Amen. And, and then we'll keep doing that until we are finished and the building is cleaned and ready for use. Amen. Uh, conducting classes and other things that we'll be doing. I already spoke to our Southeast today, excited about coming out here and doing some classes and uh, we're going to do some health stuff at the hospital. And, and uh, we, we're just going to get rolling. Amen. Amen. So, uh, as they say, all hands on deck. That's been, that's been one of the themes that's been coming up all over the place. Like, all hands on deck. And everybody who can to come. Amen. Bring some rubber gloves and some masks. Amen. And, uh, and let's go to work. Um, more will come later. We also discuss Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School will be in July. It's still June. That came up at the meeting. They said, well, why not let's do it in July like we did last year? And that's what we're going to do for the organizing coordinator. And she agreed. So it will be in July. More to come. If you want to help with Vacation Bible School, please reach out to us. New things. Um, they're going to show you to do whatever. She needs you to do to help make that successful. And uh, to God be all the glory. Bible study. Except for when I am gone and traveling. We are back in the church. And we want you to come out. Do Bible study in the church. Amen, somebody. Come on down to Mount 
of Holland Michigan Baptist Church. Uh, Count the show about 645. I keep saying I'm about 645 prayer, but I've been getting here late. And, and 645, I'm still sitting on my camera and stuff, amen. And uh, but, but come on out and, and let's fellowship together, amen. I jokingly say Wednesday night when I was out here with just two or three of us, I said, I'm, I'm having church too. Then we might even go back to virtual church if y'all keep coming out this place. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. I told y'all that I will never judge you, and you, you do as you need that say, but we are in the, in the church for Bible study, those who will come. Amen? Those announcements, please write it down. This is Jackie. I sent an email to mine because they went all over the head. They're going to remember this after the preaching. Amen? They're not going to remember anything I said before preaching. <laughs> so, <laughs> let me just send out an email. Let us pray our eyes and our minds now for giving us, give back to God, the worship of God has given us. Let's give according to how we have and bless according to how we desire to give us. Remember that God loves to give you a giver. We thank God for those who already gave by the one giver, by the we have another friend that has spoken to us all. And we praise God for that. And know that that is available. I want to remind you that we still have our um, our mission, our foreign mission, if you want to give and support a family, amen. It takes about $300 to, to support a family. So if you want to completely adopt a family, just write your check for $300. If you want to adopt two families, write $600. Amen. Uh, and God will bless. God will bless. Let us pray as we ask God to bless you on your offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for those who are today. We thank you for those who are prepared to give you tonight. God, we ask your blessing upon this offering. Bless the giver, Lord God, that they will always have sufficiency to give and to give even more. God, we just give your name the praise. Help us as a church family. To use the offering, Lord God, to glorify you all the name. And we thank you, God, for all your blessings. Because we, we have now to realize that all things come of the Lord. We give your name all the praise, all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Also, we'll come this time to receive the gift of all.
7 through 8, it says this, do not be wise in your own eyes. Say the Lord and depart from evil. Yes, sir. It will be help. Somebody say help. Yeah. Help to your flesh. Yeah. And to your own. Depart from evil. Depart from evil. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Do not think that you've got it all going on. There's a thing that we have to do, and this word tells us, amen, the way to life and help. This word lets us know how we can get to a point of living in a relationship with God that is prosperous and a relationship with God. When I say prosperous, I'm not necessarily talking about money, but a prosperous life is a fulfilling life to where you have all the things that you have need of. And not only that, that you also have life and the help. Somebody say yeah. Yeah. And the help. Right yeah. and the help. So the first thing is the way to life and help begins with listening and be obedient. Oh, help me somebody. Yes, sir. The first thing is listening and be obedient. Listening, young people, to your parents. Listening to wise counsel of your adults, amen, and advice. Yeah. And listening to the words of your heavenly Father. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Not just hearing, and I know the word. It says, faith from my hearing and hearing by the word of God. But it's not just hearing the word, but listening to the word and applying. Because I often say that the difference between hearing and listening is that you hear because your ears are working fine. That's right. Amen. You hear because you do not have a problem with the ears. Amen. But listening requires your effort. Right. Listening requires some effort on your part yeah. to pay attention. And that's what the word says. Amen. The text says, give attention. Give attention to my word. Amen. Incline your ear to my saying. Ephesians 6, 2 and 3 says, honor your father and your mother. Yes, sir. Which is the first commandment with promise. Yeah. That it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Amen. Yes, sir. In other words, you may have rights. Amen. Amen. Honor your father and mother. So it starts with listening to your parents because they're bringing you up. But as you get a little bit older and you're able to understand, you must listen to the word of God. Amen. We listen to our parents as we are growing up. Amen. As we get older, we must listen to our heavenly father. I have a daddy because he's going to speak to us through his words and sometimes he speaks to you in the midnight hour. Amen. In that still small voice, he's talking, he's giving us direction, he's telling us don't go that way, don't go this way. And you know, I've said so many times, you have said to yourself, something's told me. Yeah. <laughs> something told me not to do that. It is not something, it is something wrong. Amen. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit speaking you saying, don't go on that. That's way. right. That's right. Amen. Watch yourself. And he constantly talks to us. The question is, are you listening? Are you listening? I like that song that says, Are you listening? Are you listening? Amen. God is constantly speaking to us through his written word. Amen. Through his Holy Spirit. He yeah. is talking. And the first point to life and health is listening to the word and yes, being sir. obedient to the word. He said this in Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 25. Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 25. Therefore, you shall lay up these words of mine in your heart yeah. and in your soul. Bind yes, them as sign on your hand, and they shall be as something between your eyes. Verse 19. You shall teach them. Oh, oh somebody. Yes, you shall teach them to your children. Speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. Look at yes, you. Talk about me all the time. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Verse 20. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and yeah. on your gates. That your days, watch this, that your days and the days of your children right. may be multiplied in the land which the Lord swore to your father to give them, like the days of the heavens above the earth. Amen. For yeah. if you, verse 22 says this, for if you, somebody say if you, if you, if you carefully keep all the commandments which I command you today, to love the Lord your God, amen, to walk in all his ways, and to hold fast to him, then the Lord will drive out those nations from before you, and will dispose greater and mightier nations than yourself, verse 24, every place, watch this, every place on which your soul, the sole of your foot tread, right. shall be yours. That's right. God said, if you obey my word, yeah. everywhere that you go, it will be yours. I will make your way plain for you. Come on, somebody. Right. And he continues, he says, From the wilderness of Lebanon from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea, shall be your territory. Verse 25. No man, come on, somebody. No man. When you are 
adopted the seed of our feelings and our emotions. Amen. And he said, keep your heart with all this. In other words, control your heart. Yes, Lord. Because the heart will mess you up, y'all. Yes, sir. The heart will mess you up. You know that, you know, that, 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 little, that, that little thing you feel inside when you, when you fall in love. Oh, yeah. 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 When that certain person come out, they done fell in love with it. Yeah. Back in the day, we used to say, it's no so wide open, they brought the match up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. And, and people, people do some crazy stuff. Yeah. In the name of love, what? It's a feeling and an emotion, and it will mess you up. Don't kill it. Listen, teachers are there. Yeah. You say a lot of anger. You get your little feelings hurt, and some of you hurt the 
people. Yep. When your feeling it wasn't hurt, you want somebody to hurt with you. Yeah. What's that other saying? Misery. Oh. <laughs> Y'all know it. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm miserable, so I want to make you miserable. Well, I will tell you for me, I tell that for nobody else, but you ain't making me miserable. Ooh, Lord. Amen. When I get up in the morning, I make a decision, I'm going to have joy today. Yeah, Lord. And I'm miserable because T ain't making himself miserable. Your behavior is not going to make me miserable. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Because I am controlling who? I am controlling my feelings and emotions. Yeah. I can't control yours, but I can control mine. And the way life can happen is all controlling your mouth. Verse 24 of our text says, put away from your deceit, put away from you a deceitful mouth and perverse lips far from you. Uh-huh. Get that deceitful mouth and preferred lips away from you. Yeah, Lord. That's what the word says. Yes, sir. Stop saying those things. That's right. Stop saying stuff that hurt people. Right. Speak words that edify and words yeah. that build up and words that encourage. Amen. Speak words that help somebody along the way. Speak words that help someone to get control of themselves. Speak words that help with life and help. James chapter 3, verse 2. Uh, Reverend Darrell Lewis, I think that was the first one I heard, called the tongue uh, the, the pink tornado. Pink tornado. <laughs> I, I, I believe he was from that. The pink tornado. Amen. It's trouble. Yes, sir. I little tongue gets you in trouble, baby. Yes, sir. Let me tell you. Let me say, somebody say, I hope you watch what you say. Watch, watch, watch what you say. Because let me tell you what, things will come out of your mouth if you ain't careful that you won't prepare to say. But it happens so quick, you know. You must learn how to control it. And James said this in James 3, verse number 2. James says, for all, for we all stumble in many things. Yeah. If anyone does not stumble in word, he's a perfect man. Look at what the Bible says. Right. If you don't stumble with that word every now and then, you're a perfect man because every single one of us mess up sometimes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Yeah. Let's go. And, and he says, and they will grab a whole body, verse number 3, James 3, 3. Indeed, we put bit in our horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn their whole body, verse 4. Look also at ship, although they are so large and are driven by fierce wind, they are turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires it. You get that analogy? This great big ship is turned by a very small rudder, wherever the pilot desires. Verse number 5, James 3, 5. Even so the tongue. Yep. What an analogy. Even so the tongue is a little member and most great thing. See how great a forest, amen, a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire of worldly iniquity. Come on, somebody. The tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set by the fire, set by fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird and reptile and creature of the sea is tame and has been tamed by mankind. Verse number 8 says, but no man, somebody say no man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil. Full of deadly poison. The tongue is a bad baby. Bad boy. <laughs> It'll mess you up. Yes, no. Especially if you don't control your feelings and emotions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, Amen. Your heart, because it starts, let me tell you, you start feeling stuff, you start saying stuff. Hey, Amen. You get mad. Some folks get so mad, they don't even know what they say. <laughs> Girl, you said, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. You, you said it, honey. And that was pretty loud. Yeah. I did not say that. There have been some times I've been in some conversation. Just sitting up in some con- con- conversation where I said, God, I wish I had recorded that thing. Yeah. So I could play it back to them so they could hear what they said because they swear up and down. They are swelling in mama's grave. I didn't say it. But you were so upset. You were so angry. You just let stuff come out. Whatever popped up in the mind, whatever popped in the heart, that's what you said. I'm telling you that if you want to know the way to life and health, you must control your tongue. Yep. The only way to control the tongue is 
by God himself. Amen. 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 God has to have you control that tongue. Listen to this. Proverbs 15 1 says this. A soft answer uh -huh. turns away the wrath. Yeah. That's the word of God. Yes, sir. A soft answer turns away the wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Yeah. Brings more anger. Amen, somebody. He said this in verse 2, Proverbs 52. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly, but the mouth of fools pour for foolishness. Uh -huh. That's the word of God. So my little one is getting yeah. off. That time's run out. The way to life and health is listen and be obedient. Control your feeling and emotion. Control your tongue. And finally, keep your eyes on God. Yes, sir. If you want to know the way to life and health, you've got to keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. If you want to know the way to life and health, you've got to keep your eyes in the Word of God. Amen. And not allow anyone to cause you to deviate from the Word of God. Yeah. Because I want you to know that it's easy because the noise of the world will confront you and cause you to turn away from the Word. Verse 25 and 26 of our text says this, that your eyes look straight ahead, that your eyelids look right before you. On the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from an evil way. I want you to know today that the way to life and health requires that we control ourselves, that we listen to the word of God and be obedient, that we control our hearts, that we control our mouth and our tongue, that we put everything in context and we hold on to God. And we look to God for guidance. We look to God's word to help us along the way. Yeah. 23 and 26 says, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my way. Keep your eyes on the Lord and observe the way of the Lord. And he said in Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2, I will lift up my eyes. 